Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Surviving Scientology Radio with your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Today we have on with us Chris Shelton. Chris, welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me again. Hey, Chris. Um, back in the day when I was on Xenu.net uh, and you were still in the church, mm-hmm. uh, I used to post um, these things I'd call Scientology High Strangeness Alerts. And and I and I po- I posted these. <laughs> no, I love this. I love the. I love that name. Well, it, it it was it was funny, but it was serious. You know, one of those things. Because, yes. Because sometimes yes. Scientology is so demented and evil and vile, and at other times they are so frigging weird and strange. And yes. so it's like high strangeness, but they would they would do things when they were going into a period where I knew there was going to be high strangeness. Like mm-hmm. and, and, and that's why they're called a cult to me. The that's, argue, that's exactly why. Well, part of part of what, you know, Mike Rinder has said, part of what defines a cult is that you can't leave. Right. Yep. That's right. For, for me, part of what defines a cult is weird, strange, bizarre and often violent behavior. And violence can be uh, psychoterror. You know, it can mm-hmm. be it can That's be right. these weird threats to uh, harass, intimidate, or even destroy someone's income, right? So that's right. So what I'm calling now, what I'm issuing a Scientology high strangeness alert for October, November, December, 2018, because as Leah Romani's show approaches. I have to tell you things I've seen and things that happen to you show that we're entering a period of high strangeness. And yeah. I want people to be aware of this. Now, you, I, I invited you on because you received a very strange email t- today. Could you tell our listeners who it was purportedly from? And then we'll discuss it. Yeah, it was reportedly from Lawrence Wright. Author of Going Clear. That's right, and uh, and very much involved in the Going Clear documentary with Alex Gibney. I had the pleasure of meeting him at the showing down in Austin. It was he's really a super nice guy. Well, he's a super smart too. He's a Pulitzer Prize winner for his book Looming Tower, uh, which I'm in the middle of right now, <laughs> actually. So that that was even more more strangeness. Yeah, it's one of the the, the top books. So you were. You receive an email that's supposed to be from Larry Wright, Lawrence mm-hmm. Wright, but something arouses your suspicion. So, so what do you do? Well, I, yeah, it was it was a weird email because it had some pretty odd questions in it about um, you know people in the ex community, and I thought, well, this is an odd set of questions for Lawrence Wright to be asking me much less sending it to me at my askchrisshelton at gmail.com <laughs> email address. I have other ones that he could easily get. Uh, so that was a little bit odd. Uh, so I decided, okay, who do I know who I absolutely positively know has Lawrence Wright's correct email, right? So I contacted a friend of mine who has that, uh, Mike Rinder, and, uh, and we confirmed that it very definitely was not <laughs> – <laughs> Lawrence writes uh, email to me, and so then it was obvious that you know this was uh, Scientology motivated. Sure, and the email is Lawrence Wright at mail dot com. Now, if you just glance at it, you'll think it says gmail dot com. Right, I, that is what I did. Yeah, it's Lawrence Wright at mail dot com. Now, I want Scientology's Office of Special Affairs to know that. You know, forensically, we, Chris and I, have stripped out the headers, and these will be forwarded to the appropriate agencies because really, this is identity theft. Mm-hmm. And science, one of the reasons I'm, I've called a high strangeness alert, uh, Scientology is now engaged in uh, malicious behavior. So, this particular email that they actually steal Lawrence Wright's name and they're emailing it this is identity theft and 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 so that's a let's leave that issue aside for now uh 
fishing, whatever you want to call it, it's still felonious behavior, period. And so let's yeah. start in, if you want to read the letter, we'll just to take it like read it, read the intro in the first question and we'll cover that. So I want our readers to hear what the church is fishing for and why they're engaged in identity right. theft. So if you would be kind enough to start, good sir. Sure, let me just look it up here real fast. Sorry, I did not have it in front of me. No problem. Okay, great. And while you're getting it, um, mm -hmm. this this will be published on Tony Ortega's blog along with the uh, the pathway, of course. Um, Scientology tends to register its hate websites down through GoDaddy down in Panama. And it tends to use mail.com. I, I, I too receive weird emails, but for them to be so bold as to actually uh, steal Lawrence Wright's identity is. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty out there. Yeah, usually they'll use, um, they'll just use fake names that are as fake as their stock photo Scientologists. You know, exactly. That, that Stan League uses. <laughs> exactly. And I've gotten my share of those, yes. <laughs> Well, this one, um, okay, so here's the, here's the body of this email. Uh, Chris, I'm working on a Scientology-related story that will appear in a major U.S. publication about two weeks from now, and I'm wondering if I could get some clarification from you on a few issues. I really do appreciate any help you can provide. One, are you aware of Karen Della Carriere's funding of Tony Ortega? I have pretty solid evidence that he is funded almost entirely by her, and I'm looking to close the loop. Two. Yeah. Well, hold on. Karen... Let's let's hold there. Yeah. Okay. Now. Yeah. I can categorically state that my wife Karen Dilla Carrier does not fund Tony Ortega, <clears throat> and um, so o o Osa has this thing. Uh, they they created the the troika. Um, Tony, mm -hmm. Tony Leah Romney, and Mike, and then Karen is apparently above that as the financier, right? P pulling all the strings and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is just pure lunacy. But but look at the look at how the opening. Uh, and this is Lawrence Wright, okay? And he mm -hmm. said the the fake Osa and Leah just did a trailer. Curious? Yes. <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious about how stupid this letter is, Osa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, because at first, when I opened this email, I, I thought it was legit. I mean, it says Lawrence Wright on it. And I, and I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. I hadn't yet, you know, looked through and seen the, the things that were wrong with it. I was just reading it. And I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, major publication, or Scientology related story, maybe it's doing some follow up or something. Totally makes sense to me that he would do that. And he's reaching out to me. Okay, that's cool. And then I read this first question and I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> what, what is he talking about? That's, and, and, and even if he was doing a major report in a publication, why would this information be at all significant to anybody about anything? Well, see, that, that's, this is what makes it <clears throat> so stupid. The fake, the fake Lawrence Wright, meaning the Office of Special Affairs, I have pretty solid evidence. No, you don't. There's no evidence that exists because it's not happening. Chris, exactly. I know drugs are not used in the church of Scientology, but I am tempted to say these people are smoking crack. <laughs> oh, smoking, smoking worse than crack than smoking Hubbard. I mean, it, it definitely, you talk about something that rots your brain, man. Okay. Oh, damn. Now, now, read question two. All right. So, yeah, the next point, too. Has Karen or her husband, Jeffrey, ever offered you any sort of funding or assistance? Parentheses, paying for trips, computer equipment, giving you a credit card, etc. Okay, now, <laughs> Chris. So, uh, first off, obviously, <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> I've never paid for a trip for you, nor has Karen. I've never paid for computer equipment for you. I'm, and I certainly haven't given you a credit card, nor is Karen. No. 
<laughs> no, I thought that last bit. I was like, "Give you a credit card? Do people do that?" Damn! I yeah. Where's my credit card, Jeff? <laughs> yeah. Where's my spending account? Come on, this is my expense account here. Let's go. <laughs> well, well, what they're pissed off about two things. Uh, when Marty Rathbun first left the church, Karen gave him a credit card to use. When went oh, back, that's right. That's you know, right. She was she was helping him, right? Yeah. So that's right. And and and, and go, even going earlier on the on the chain, as we would say in Scientology, <laughs> going earlier on the chain, when Karen Rout out of the Sea Org in 1990, okay, she, uh, she was kind enough. To, uh, she and Heber were divorced, but she sent Heber a, a credit card in case he needed expenses or anything. They, they were in very good terms, and they had a, you know son together, Alexander. Mm-hmm. So Karen can be generous to a fault. Uh, and that was the only time she's ever done that. Now, now, so they must be thinking that she just has credit cards she hands out, right? And yeah, exactly. So so far they're looking for. See, this is what Office of Special Affairs doesn't get. The community out here does things organically. There's no like centralized bureau. They thought anonymous was some centralized thing that they could get to, right? And, and they always were looking for the secret headquarters of Anonymous. They can't get they can't get that people can do stuff on their own initiative independently, organically, and that there's no central funding like there is in the Church of Scientology. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't have a financial planning meeting every week secretly, as nor do we plot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. What's the third question? All right, so then it goes, three, are you aware of any attempts by Karen or Tony or others to fake fair game tactics against prominent Scientology critics? If so, any details you have would be great. So, okay, let me explain this. <clears throat> back, in, mm-hmm. back when Anonymous was doing its protests, the first protests, Scientology churches up here in Southern California received fake anthrax letters. I mean, it, it, basically OSA mailed out anonymous letters with fake white powder and baking soda or whatever it was to their offices mm. and then screamed anonymous was mailing them anthrax. Oh, in the same way that they were calling in fake bomb threats and yeah, that so kind n- of thing too. So now, yeah, they're try- that. Yeah. Yeah, now they're trying to say that uh, Karen, Tony, or others have used fake fair game tactics against prominent Scientology critics. Well, no, that's never happened because Scientology does all the fair gaming. Like, for example, uh, Karen, Tony, me, other people, we don't put up the hate websites. You know, those little, piss, right. those, those little pissy, whiny hate websites. No, we don't put up the hate websites. <laughs> We don't cover up for uh, alleged rapists like Danny Masterson, Scientologist Danny Masterson. Uh-huh. Uh, we don't threaten the victims of rape, sexual harassment. We don't do any of that kind of fair gaming. We don't try to get people fired from their job, thrown off their uh, land, as happened in Oregon with Elizabeth Gale. So no, Scientology's mm-hmm. Office of Special Affairs does the real fake game, and there's no fake fair game. So this is just stupid, stupid on Office of Special well, Affairs. Well, and this was this was actually the question that made me realize that this was. I had read about private investigators who would get hired in order to, as part of fair gaming, actually, in order to uh, to call friends and employers and business associates as somebody the church was targeting. And the private investigator would make it sound like that person, the target, was under investigation of some kind or was under suspicion of some kind for wrongdoing. And that would just plant the seed and then, you know, hopefully uh, some kind of rumor campaign or something starts or something bad happens as a result of that is what obviously would be the you know, the goal of such an operation. And when I read that line, I thought, oh, that's what this is. (laughs) I'm like, right away, that's what I thought of (laughs) in reading this email, you know, when I was first going through it, uh, because that's just crazy talk. I have never, ever in the last, what's it been, six years now, 
Yeah. Five years. I have not ever seen something like that. No, we're not done. That, no, that you know. No, that's just childish and stupid. It's uh, it, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't happen. So, question number four. No. Have there been any attempts by the church to smear you directly? And of course, uh, yes, there have. Yeah, there have been both direct attempts yeah. and third party attempts. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure there are some people out there right now who hate me for <laughs> really no good reason. Because <laughs> of, of some, you know, uh, action via the, the church that, you know, whatever. Yeah. So. Okay, now yeah, and of course, I have that wonderful hate website on me. Yeah, and the church has dozens of hate websites, so that's proof of fair game. And, and just to that yep. point, to that point, Chris, uh, David Miscavige's one hundred million dollar waste of money known as Scientology TV. It, it's entirely put to the lie by all the hate websites Scientology puts up on people. This is the schizophrenia of Scientology. It has hate web pages on people that engage in libel and slander. And at the same time, you go over and it wants to have the Deerings making their banjos. And the Deerings should exactly. know that part of their banjo profit goes to finance hate websites, fair game, private investigators. Exactly. Now. And and worse. Well, yeah. You know, things that, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm sure... The it's Deering's, an abuse of our tax dollars, too. Yeah. It's, it's horrendous. Now, I'm sure the, the Deerings, because they have to be good Scientologists, do not want to know about this or are not aware of it. I'm sure if, if, if they were approached by Office of Special Affairs and said, hey, would you like profits from your banjo company go to destroying the lives of other people that we hate? They would be shocked. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can't, mm -hmm. speak, I, I can't speak for them. They, they might actually be pleased. I don't know. But nevertheless, they do lend their name to Scientology TV. So it's sort of like exactly. David, David Miscavige, make up your goddamn mind. Do you want to engage in fair game or do you want to have a fake Scientology TV channel? It's like you're sending out mixed messages and you're wasting $100 million in doing it. So either be an evil cult or reform and be what you pretend to be on Scientology TV. You know, otherwise, just shut down Scientology TV because it's a big waste of money. So, That's the, for sure. But if they want to be schizophrenic, this, this is just more evidence of it. Okay. Question number five is really interesting. Yeah, it says, how often are you in communication with so-called under-the-radar members who are scared to leave due to personal repercussions? <laughs> like, <coughs> like you're going to tell them that, right? Well, exactly. I mean, that's how often am I in communication? Well, fairly often. <laughs> I get emails all the time, phone calls, met with people in person. You know, it's uh, this is a this is a thing. This is what we do. <laughs> you know? But am I going to give anyone any specifics on any of it? No way am I going to. You know, every one of those people who reaches out and and uh, and meets me or talks to me. Uh, you know, it's guaranteed confidentiality. I have, I have zero reason to tell anybody anyone else's business. Exactly, so. exactly. And and but you know, Chris, just putting on uh, putting your going back into the Scientology mindset. OSA mm -hmm. OSA is is extremely scared and concerned about under the radar members. That is people, who, Scientologists who are into the, mm -hmm. in, the, in, in the church, but won't leave because they know there will be hell to pay if they leave. That's right. And OSA knows that too. That's right. Disconnection, fair game, loss of clients, loss of income, hate websites, leaking PC folder data. Well, I'll and tell you, they, you know, that is a big, big button for them, people who <sighs> leak information. They really, really hate that. And I get people leaking stuff to me all the time. So oh, so, science <laughs> they got a leaky boat, you know? <laughs> well, what, well, what happens is that because they, they, they make the cost of leaving so expensive, that is, you will pay hell and it will be a nightmare if you leave Scientology. The only way mm -hmm. under the radar people have to retaliate is to leak information. 
to the media. That's right. And That's so right. it's like Scientology, you, you, you can try to lock it down all you want, but it's just not going to work. And uh, well, once again, it's that once again, they're creating their own enemies and their own problems. I mean, we see this over and over again. My entire leaving was was entirely generated by the church. I actually wanted to stay. They you know what I mean? At the at the end. And, and then they just made it completely un untenable. And uh, that's what they do. They, do, they it's that's why I've always said that their own self-destruction is literally in their DNA, because this is what they do. No. Yeah, the, the Scientology is inherently self-destructive. And then re, uh, if you could kindly read the end of the letter. Yes, and he says, thanks. I'm certain this article will help in taking down this cult. You, Karen, Jeffrey, Tony, and Mike are doing great work, signed Larry. And that last line, of course, was <laughs> I mean, a little bit of uh, crazy talk considering those questions. So I, you know, by that point I knew something was completely uh, rotten in Denmark here. Yeah, this is this is again. Also, you're not paying attention, and I hate to have to coach you in this stuff, but the idiocy. The letter opens with investigating Karen Della Carriere. Is she funding Tony? And then the letter ends by acknowledging that Karen and Tony are doing right. great work. It's like, what? So this is not even. The, this is not well done. Nevertheless, it is identity theft. And we right. wanted to make listeners aware of it. And to be aware of this high strangeness as, as season three of Leah approaches, there's going to be more weird emails. So if you get an email from somebody, check. This says Lawrence Wright right. at, at mail.com. Make sure it, you know, before you say anything or communicate, you know, verify things call people in person uh exactly I, I, I and i'll give i'll give you some examples back <clears throat> uh several years ago i had producers people representing themselves as producers offering you know wanting to meet me because they're working on a tv show mm -hmm. and and i would only meet them at a starbucks and i would ask to see their driver's license Huh. And why would I'd say, look, uh, if I meet you, I want to see your driver's license, some other other ID so I can verify who you are. And the meetings would never happen. These were usually private investigators. Uh, mm. We know that Chuck Beatty, uh, a, a journalist, uh, was a, an OSA operative for years. You know, and so you you have to be aware OSA will use flattery lies private investigators to yep. try to, to try to get any kind of information and and is uh tony ortega reported karen and i had a, a private investigator come out to our house named rebecca dobkin she's here in los angeles mm -hmm. working for an attorney named amanda touchton and they were investigating heber this was a thing where this is part of um what i consider to be part of an pattern of interstate harassment. It's an attempt to stifle, mm -hmm. to, to stifle free speech. It's an attempt to intimidate people. It's what Hubbard called noisy investigation. This is all being documented. It's all being noted. And if OSA wants to send out things through the email or send people at the house, it, it all gets recorded and it just gets compiled as evidence. So this particular letter Obviously, Chris, because you're high visibility, they, they emailed it to you. Do you think they had an intent to, what was their intent in contacting you? Did they want you to find out it was a fake or did they want you to answer it? What, put yourself Well, it's in. really, it's, you know, yeah, I, I think uh, my first idea, my first thought, of course, was that this was meant to be answered. Um, and then I thought, who would possibly think I'm so stupid that I wouldn't see this for what it is. So then I thought, well, maybe they've either grossly underestimated me <laughs> or two. This is meant to just stir me up, you know, in the same way that I was thinking about, like we talked about with the, the way private investigators would do. Um, so I sort of concluded that I don't think anybody would assume I'm that dumb. So they probably just sent this to me to just stir me up. 
Yeah, to just see if it would create an effect. Yeah. And, it's, and uh -huh. instead, now we're on the uh, on a podcast talking about it, and you know, fifty thousand people or more will listen to our podcast. Yeah. So it didn't. It did not have the intended result. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure they did not expect. Whoever sent this, I'm pretty sure, did not expect that to happen, you know. And and who knows? I mean, I, I do want to just kind of throw this out there, although I'm, I, it's fairly obvious that this is Scientology motivated. It's possible somebody else wrote this, you know, who, who is not the Church of Scientology. But it certainly seems incredibly weird that somebody would go to such... De it, would, it, would be, it would have to be somebody who is intimately familiar with the X community. So... It just, you know, it, it just doesn't really sound like something someone who's not the Church of Scientology would do. Well, it doesn't have a, it doesn't, there's no motive for anyone else to do it. You know? That's that's what the other thing I couldn't think through is why would it, why would somebody else do that too? Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Lawrence Wright himself did, did put the message out on Facebook and uh, to, Mm -hmm. alert, alert people to this. Um, so that's the main thing to be aware of the, the anyone who's involved in as, as a critic, a former member who speaks out, just be aware there is high strangeness. Scientology's intent is always to, to shut down free speech whenever it can. And uh, mm -hmm. the timing of this coming is, is on Tuesday, November 6, 2018 at 4.06 p.m. Uh, and that's L.A. time, I guess, when it was sent out. Uh, mm. So, you know, sometimes, um, you know, Karen has told me before that, that, that David Miscavige would get air, very, very angry and demand that OSA do something. Right. And that pressure, right. COB is demanding you do something will often result right. in, in, in irrational or stupid things. And this is, this is a case of it. <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I mean, whoever sent this was clearly, and, and to me of all people, a very irrational act. Yeah. So, so if anyway, if anyone in the audience is listening and you get a letter like this, you know, email it to me, email it to Chris, publicize it. Because that's, that's mm -hmm. really what we need to do is to publicize this. And if you get these out publicized and promoted, millions of people can see what Scientology actually does with its tax exempt dollars. It engages in this kind of, uh, this kind of hostile act. And in, in this case, even identity theft of a very prominent Pulitzer Prize winning author, which I'm surprised that they would do that. Uh, but Fair game knows no boundaries. Exactly. So there are no rules with that. And and you're absolutely right that exposure is the best strategy because it, it's it, Scientology is very 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 much like a fourth grade bully, mm -hmm. and and by that I mean they're childlike. And when the teacher comes around or they are exposed or somebody finds out what they're doing, they cringe and freak out because they don't want people to know they're bullies and they want it to all be in secret. So it really does. It's it's never a bad thing to just expose it. No, it's not. Sunshine disinfects. Well, Chris, thank you so much for coming on to this special episode. And to our listeners, again, be aware of there is high strangeness afoot now through the end of December. And please do uh, share it, put it online, post it, because that uh, that's what we want to see is more evidence. So, Chris, thank you so much for coming on Surviving Scientology Radio. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, always look forward to your your weekly podcasts. For any new listeners, what are your websites? Where should they go to find what you do? Oh yeah, they can find me on YouTube with my name, Chris Shelton. I'm uh, known as the Critical Thinker at Large, and my website is mncriticalthinking.com. Well, very good. And mine is uh, Surviving Scientology on YouTube. That's my wife Karen's channel. And I have the ScientologyMoneyProject.com where I uh, delve into all things financial, legal, and propaganda. So for Surviving Scientology Radio, this is your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Thank you so much for listening. As always, we'll be in very good touch.